you're about to witness a miracle. See the astonishing surgery. Graham, how are you there? Pretty good. That stops the shakes. Look at that, it's, it's stationary now. That's why it's stopped. Ends all the misery. You can smile. <laughs> yes, I can smile now. From this. <laughs> amazingly, to this. It's a sunny day in Cleveland. It's called deep brain stimulation. It was the final stab in the demon that possessed this wretched body for so long. <laughs> <laughs> and it's transforming lives completely. It's a wonderful world to be in. I love this place. Graham, how are you there? This is Graham's last resort. Now, how bad's the tremor in your right hand? Can you show us there for us? We'll do the left side of the brain first, because that controls the right hand, OK? Delicate and dangerous surgery. Tell me whether you can feel anything, Graham. In which surgeon Richard Bitter bores two holes into Graham's skull to target the tiny pocket of cells causing the tremor. Not hurting too much? No, it's not Good. hurting. Oh, cool. There's a 10% chance of either stroke or paralysis, even death. Had he no tube, thanks? And incredibly, Graham is awake for every second of it. Okay, how are you feeling there, Graham? Pretty good. Deep brain stimulation is a new frontier in medicine, offering huge potential to people with neurological disorders. And this is the key, a tiny electrode. Using this, doctors can pinpoint the exact part of the brain that's on the blink. It's been successful with Parkinson's disease, but for millions of people suffering from other movement disorders, trapped in a body they can't control, deep brain stimulation could one day set them free. Jeff Matovic was the pioneer for deep brain stimulation, the first to undergo this amazing surgery for Tourette's and its greatest success story. How about uh, repeating it is a sunny day in Cleveland, Ohio. It is a sunny day in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, my God. Jeff's transformation stunned the world. Deep brain stimulation had only been used successfully to treat Parkinson's disease. Oh, good job. Remarkably, it was Jeff himself who truly believed it could help his Tourette's. I made over 2,000 phone calls. I spent time researching the internet. I called people I didn't even know looking for answers. I was angry. I wanted an answer. I wanted to find my silver bullet, but I couldn't. I said, Dr. Masunas, this needs to be done. I am at my end. This is a body that you're seeing that's out of control. The axial image. Professor Robert Masunas took that chance. This is how it works. Two electrodes were inserted into the part of Jeff's brain causing his Tourette's. They are connected to a battery in the chest. It's like a pacemaker for the brain. The electrical pulses neutralize the faulty brain signal, but they must be in exactly the right place in order to stop the ticks. It's almost like a fishing expedition. You've got to get the line and the bait in exactly the right spot. Yes, and you have to be in exactly the right place or the entire expedition is without value. And if you are in the right place, the catch... It's can... magical. And so it was for Jeff. Switch the batteries on, and for the first time since he was a young boy, he is completely still. I think if anything, it's going to feel... Uh... For while. It was finally the slaying of the dragon. It was the final stab of the sword and the demon that possessed this wretched body for so long. Back in Melbourne's Alfred Hospital, Graham Miller is hoping for his own miracle. I think what staggers me is Graham is awake in the theatre in this brace and he'll be working with you, won't he? He's a, he's a, a critical part of this whole process. Really. So it could be like, yes, that's the right spot. That's yes. the right spot. Yeah, and he, he'll know. He, he will know. If we, if we hit the right spot, he'll, he should be able to tell us. Okay, how are you feeling there, Graham? Pretty good. 
As it has for the last 10 years, Graham's hand has been shaking throughout the surgery. We know that we're in the right area. We want to make sure that we get the best spot so that we can put the wire in that position. But now, the moment has come. Dr Bittar has located the trouble spot and is about to hit it with an electric current. It's, it's stationary now. Yes, that's right. It's that's wonderful. It's stopped. Yeah, it's good. You can tell the difference, can't you, Graham? Certainly can. Yeah. yeah. Do you marvel at this? Absolutely. It's breathtaking. It's breathtaking to observe it in individual patients and then to get the privilege of watching them without that horrible movement disorder. It's inexpressible. Jeff Matovic's trailblazing surgery has paved the way for other Tourette sufferers around the world. So you're wired down here. I'm wired and I'm turned on. You're wired and turned on. <laughs> James Michael Vesey's life was changed the day he saw Jeff's story on television. I walked in from school and my mom said, I want to show you something. I said, okay. And so I sat down at the computer and she showed me a video clip of uh, Jeff Matovic. And as soon as it was over, he looked at me and he said, Mom, can they do that for me? And I said, would you want it? And he said, yes, can you imagine me being normal? And it wasn't until he said that that I realized he didn't feel normal. As a young child, James Michael had been a normal boy, the pride of parents James and Jill. But from the age of seven, the tick started and the normal life was over. I couldn't sleep, so I, I tried to lay down in bed at 8.30 at night. I wouldn't fall asleep till midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, because I'd just be ticking so bad. But after deep brain stimulation, complete transformation. James Michael is now an apprentice electrician, a confident and popular young man. I have no problems, you know, going to a club or going just out anywhere. I don't have any problems doing that no more because I'm not worried about if other people are looking at me in a bad way. I'm actually more wondering if they're looking at me in a good way now, so. You can smile. <laughs> yes, I can smile now. Back in Melbourne, battered and bruised, Graham Miller is recovering from more than six hours in surgery. Oh, weren't you looking good? <laughs> Yes, you're looking very good. Mm, how do you feel? Good. Graham now has electrodes in his brain and the pacemaker in his chest. It worked on the operating table. Will it work now? Using a simple remote control, his pacemaker is switched on for the first time. Okay, so it's turning it up. Can you feel that? See how the tremor goes? Okay, now take a sip. Good. Graham, what's it like to be still? Well, it's... It's... Amazing, really. When I first met you, you'd hold your glass like that. Look at it now. Yeah. <laughs> Come away. <laughs> it, it's like magic, isn't it? It is. It is, Peter. Yeah. Margaret, you said you wanted your husband back. Oh, yes. How do you feel seeing this stillness? I think it's wonderful and it's amazing and I'm very, very grateful. And I'll get a cup of tea in the cup and not in the saucer <laughs> <laughs> again, <laughs> which will be lovely. Deep brain stimulation has given these men their lives back. It's not a cure. The electrodes must stay in place for good. But doctors believe this remarkable surgery may one day treat depression, obesity, even Alzheimer's. For Graham and Margaret Miller, it's already done its job. Thank you. Helping them get back to the simple things in life. Mm, thank you.